Tema mog današnjeg izlaganja... So, my topic for today, as my distinguished colleague has announced, is the scientific approach to genocide with a reflection to post-genocidal society and reflection to the case of Bosnia and Herzegovina a decade later. But before I start with my presentation, which directly deals with this particular topic, I would like to say before we enter this scientific approach or before explaining how the university in Sarajevo approached this problem, I just want to draw your attention to the origin of the notion of genocide. So we're talking about a notion which was coined by two different uh, terms, genos and the Greek notion genus and the Latin word cedere. So by coining or by putting these two notions together, we coined a new notion, namely the genocide. Of course, the credit for this coined word go to Raphael Lemkin. Today, in the literature written in almost all languages of the world, we had a position that a great impact on Raphael Lemkin was um, the speech of Winston Churchill from 1941, when Winston Churchill addressed through BBC to the whole world. In his speech, Winston Churchill, in the very last part of the speech, said that the whole world, alluding to the events in the world, have become witness, witness to this nameless crime. Very soon, the Europe will become witness of genocide, and at the end of the World War II and fall of the fascist, fascist regime, we open, there was a court procedure, historical court procedures open against all those who had committed war crimes. So I'm referring to the famous um, Nuremberg process and the judgment from October 1946. For me, as a lawyer, it's quite interesting to look at this judgment for the reason because I'm um, we have a judgment which for the first time, which within the concept of international law, introduced the notion of genocide. Of course, in the 1946, the notion which stems from this aforementioned judgment was used primarily to define or to describe aware organization and systemic destruction of racial and national groups. Since 1946 until uh, January 1992, there is a second part of a struggle because, of course, of Raphael Lemkin, because, of course, this notion, this new term, needed to be presented as a separate category. Of course, all this was resolved by introducing this uh, that new notion into a convention. So this convention actually entered into force on January 12th in 1951. So when we speak about scientific approach and the problem of genocide, of course we will follow or stay on the path of the writing of Professor Gregory Stanton who says that any genocide, irrespective of the place of commission, goes through eight different separate phases. According to Stanton, we're talking about the following stages. Classification, symbolization, dehumanization, organization, polarization, identification, extradition, extradition and denial. So when we try to translate these stages to the territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and in particular if we have in mind the events that occurred in uh, July 1995, for us the most important stage is this last one, namely the denial. Today, all of us here in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we witness that there is a very strong uh, current or movement which actively works on promoting this last stage, the denial. Again, referring to the writing of Professor Stanton, I need to emphasize that this eighth 
stage is the stage which always follows the genocide and as a rule this is one of the most certain indicators for the future genocidal massacres. When it, speaking of the scientific approach itself, in particular in light of what happened in Srebrenica, I will just briefly refer to some of the most important um, points uh, from July 1995 or the famous or infamous genocide in Srebrenica, for which we could say that this is the largest or the biggest crime in Europe after the World War II, namely after Holocaust. So according to my personal view, the studying or teaching of genocide needs to include several very important segments or elements, so to say. These elements are of political nature, social, cultural, religious, moral, economic, biological and psychological. So if we look at the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina 20 years after the genocide in Srebrenica, I will just make a very brief historical overview just to go through certain steps that Bosnia and Herzegovina has undertaken until 1995. I have to say that Bosnia and Herzegovina very early um, in attempt to make an impact in relation to the aggression that occurred in its territory already on March 20th, 1993 have filed a motion or filed a lawsuit against the um, Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. So this was a lawsuit that was actually uh, submitted to International Crime Tribunal at The Hague. So since this was in 1993, there was a very specific situation that occurred, and that is that the judgment of this court was rendered only in 2007. And according to that judgment, since 1993 till 2007, the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia changed its internal structure and of course that was reflected in its title as well. So the judgment of this International Court of Justice stated that Yugoslavia is freed of its international responsibility for genocide but it is actually guilty of not preventing the genocide, namely I, we can say now that we're talking about a historical process which lasted for full 14 years, which is not really typical for any court in particular, if we have in mind that we're talking here about International Court of Justice. So we could say that this judgment is in a way a precedent. Since 2007 until 2015, we entered another stage and that stage is recognized by or is specific by the judgment made in February 2015. So this judgment actually was judgment in the case of uh, Republic of Serbia and Republic of Croatia. Again, this judgment was rendered by the same court, ICJ. In this case, in 2015 judgment, both parties were actually acquitted of the charges of genocide. So it is in, uh, stated that there is no genocidal intent proved in this case. So now the question is whether those judgments, one from 2007 and this one in 2015, are the judgments by which the court reduced the relevance of earlier mentioned conventions. So that is the one question that I would like to raise here. The second question that I would like to raise is, is the International Court of Justice at The Hague in a way set a very high bar when it comes to genocidal intent. So if we look at the situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina and again having in mind the fact that we are post-genocidal society, we could say that the territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina or the entire society 20 years after the genocide in Srebrenica faces with uh, numerous problems. In first line, I try to somehow group and summarize all these problems, and one of the most important problems is the issue of justice. How to meet and deliver justice? Of course, 
this issue is closely related to political responsibility. In addition to these very two important points, we could say that uh, other problems uh, which um, are present in, in the BIH society is denial of genocide, facing the past, lasting memory of the victims of genocide, and inadequate assistance or support to the survivors, namely the witnesses of the genocide. As for academia, and by academia, we also in, imply the approach to studying of genocide, genocide studies which exclusively based on the historical and social sciences. We have to say that we started doing studies of genocide uh, in the first half of 80s, but we have to say that nowadays there is a larger, or there is a there are many more disciplines now dealing with studying of genocide. Now the genocide is studied from different aspects and that gives us the right to to define genocide more as an area which contains therein an interdisciplinary nature or character. As for the role of academia, I have listed here some of the key elements which, e which any academia should fulfill. First of all, the public needs to be introduced with scientific truth about the genocide committed. But I have to say that this scientific truth needs to be based on the exact, reliable and credible facts and evidence. As for the city of Sarajevo and university in Sarajevo, I have to say that the university has its institute for the researching of the war crimes against humanity and international law. This body was established in 1992, only a few months after the broke war, uh, war broke out. And I think it's particularly important to mention that uh, this institute also has its publishing uh, activity and they have already built a very uh, valuable collection of writing um, but of course nowadays they face with the problems when it comes to teaching or studying genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina the problem is about the different interpretation of national history and the recent past. So we all are witnesses that today we have three different interpretations and of course this has its reflection on the process of teaching and studying genocide. University in Sarajevo has uh, several faculties as organizational units. It has academia, scientific institutes, and associate members. But only three of these, all, facu all these faculties actually deal with teaching and studying genocide, namely the Faculty of Political Sciences, Faculty of Islamic Sciences, and of course the Law School of University in Sarajevo. Uh, Faculty of Political Science, they have a course called Study of Holocaust and Genocide, which is actually taught at the second cycle of, stu cycles of study, and um, they deal with the issues uh, that start with the definition of the notion of genocide, all the way to the demographic changes of population due to genocide. The purpose of this course is to provide a detailed insight into different aspects of studying genocide. As for the Faculty of Islamic Studies, this institution also uh, created a course called the Study of Genocide, which is taught at the uh, senior year of the Bachelor Undergraduate Studies. And within this course, the students are taught about uh, genocide prior to 20th century and during the 20th century. The purpose is actually to provide a history of gen genocide and consequences thereof. Within the law school, this course is called also the study of genocide and it is also taught at the senior or the final year of the undergraduate study. 
and it includes a large number of topics, the most important of which are the conceptual framework, genocide of the 20th century, motives, means and consequences in contemporary times. The purpose of this course is actually to provide concept, history of genocide, and to develop a critical awareness or thinking of all our students. I've been warned of time, and here I will stop. Thank you very much for your attention.